Hello and welcome to Vlogmas Day 20, so not many sleeps to go. Um, I don't have anything particular planned today. Um, most of it is all kind of next week now. It's like the lulled calm before the storm of all the uh, manic preparations. Um, so, yeah, I'm, tomorrow I've got my booster jab um, and the Christmas food shop arriving. Tuesday I'll be doing a top-up shop for the stuff that I couldn't get on the order um, and uh, then this week we've got brandy butter to make, mince pies to make, got the cake to marzipan and ice so yeah I've got no little people getting excited about the uh, the time of year running around getting them away so that will help um, but at the same time that does mean I don't get the excitement over the lights and Santa and stuff that little kids bring so swings and roundabouts. Uh, at some point in the next few days I am planning on going into the National Trust property that's just over there where the deer live and see if the deer are out and um, so I'll take you along when I do that. Uh, looking at the weather today though I don't know if it'll be today. I might use it as a break from all the uh, the busyness over the next few days that might be a good, good plan. Because although I've got a lot to do over the next few days, it's, it's lots of little jobs rather than big, big jobs. So yeah, so I might, might do that at some point this week. Won't be Monday or Tuesday because I'll go all into town and that's the other direction on those days. But we'll see. Uh, I'll, I'll try and finish off the square that I'm working on for my blanket today. I'm, I'm on, I've got uh, one round of section three and all of section four to do. Um, for that, um, if you're not, if you haven't been watching my my videos in, over the year, or if you've lost track, um, I got the Game of Crafting Yarn Blanket Club this year. Um, it's the only time I've done a blanket club, and I, I won't be doing another one this coming year. I'll take a break for a bit because uh, you only need so many um, blankets. I will only make another one at some point, but possibly with a different dye. We'll see. Um, but not next year. Um, and that also gives me a chance to finish up some of my long-standing whips uh, by not having a new year-long project on the go. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've got the, the Game of Gra Crafting Blanket Yarn Club this year. I've got the Four Ply or Fingering Weight Sparkle Sock version. Um, so each month she's been sending out two skeins of yarn. Uh, it was galaxy themed this year, so there's lots of dark colours, uh, lots of purples, blues and so on. It's a bit more heavily variegated than I anticipated so visually you're not really getting the pattern of the, the squares coming through but I have picked a pattern that is nicely textured um, and it's got a big it's got a mandala in the centre so it, I felt that it fitted in with the galaxy theme. Um, so I'm using Sophie's Dream um, as my pattern, the or as the basis of the blanket and I'm doing one square for each month, so I'm only using one of the two skeins, and they were different colourways. So that means I'll have 12 skeins left over, um, approximately, when I finish the blanket, because I may need to dip into some of the leftover ones uh, for the border. Um, and the idea was to do a square up each month, and then uh, at the beginning of January, turn it all into a blanket and do the border. Um, I think I'm working on March's square at the moment, so it hasn't quite gone to plan. Because I should be working on December's, or f finishing up November's, working on December's. Because um, she sent out December's yarn with November. Um, so anyway, the, the skeins were coming out fairly late in the month, so I probably would have ended up doing December's in January if I was on track anyway. Um, it would be nice to have maybe six months done by the end of the year. So that might be a bit of a tall order, though, to get um, three and a bit squares done between now and the end of the year, but we'll see. Um, so, yeah, so I'm going to focus on that, I think. I, mean, I do have a sweater design on the needles that I probably should be working on as well. Um so I might do that for a bit as well at some point. Um, but I'm thinking I might focus on that after Christmas and into January. I don't have a deadline for it because it's my own design. So 
Uh, it's going to take me a while. It's taken me a long time to get it to the point where it's at anyway. Because I've had to pull it back in and re it a few times. And I've been doing other things in between times. I think I actually need to give myself a deadline to get it done. Um, and then it's going to take a while once it's knitted up as well for me to finalise the pattern and get it graded and everything. Because grading socks is one thing. Um, obviously my sock pattern is out, the, the Academy socks. Um, grading hats is one thing. Um, again, I've got hat pattern out. Cowls don't really need grading. So the patterns that I've done so far are fairly straightforward. Uh, there's standard socks up patterns use a limited number of, of stitch counts and because of the, the pattern that I did as well, that restricted my stitch count further. I was going to put in extra sizes compared to what you see in um, normal sock patterns, but it just didn't work out with the count that I needed for the repeat. Um, which I mean, is, is what it is. I mean, there doesn't seem to be so much of an issue in terms of inclusivity with sock patterns, um, particularly because, you know, feet only come in so many sizes uh, in terms of circumference, and then you just knit the foot as long as you need. It, it's nice and easy to adapt that. Um, hat patterns as well. There's only so much variation you can do, um, but again, you change the stitch count, you're fine. You, um, my hat pattern do, does the, the well the um, the free hat pattern, the ladderback jack hat, um, which is the one that I've released so far. I do have some plans for other hat patterns. Um, that's got quite a few sizes in it for for a hat pattern. Um, but again, you, you're dictated by the number of stitches in the repeat. I mean, that's the same for anything. Um, but garments. There's more factors to consider. I mean, socks, you're looking at the circumference of the foot. Hats, you're looking at the circumference of the head. Um, cowls, you just want something that's going to be big enough to go over the head. There's not so many variables to think about. Um, but when you look at people and their body size and their body shape, not everything goes up in the same amount as people get larger. Not everything goes down in the same amount as people get smaller. Um, particularly when you think about women's bodies, um, you can be particularly curvy and busty, but really slim on the waist. Um, you can be quite large, but with slim arms. You can be quite slim, but with uh, proportionately bulkier calf muscle, uh, arm muscles. If you um, go to the gym, for instance, you might have built up some muscles in that area a bit more. Um, and then there's the, the thinking of, well, not everybody's particularly busty and there might be some guys that want to, to knit your garment. Um, so yeah, there's a lot more variables to consider. So it's going to take me a while to work out how I want to, to grade a garment pattern, um, how I want, what sizes I want to have available um, in the pattern itself and what I think is suitable to be left for the knitter to, to work out. In sewing patterns it's nice and easy when you've got different when to sort of adapt a pattern to, to fit your size. You look at the finished garment measurements on, on the, the pattern and you trace out the bits that you need and you can easily draw a different line to to fit it. You can sort of see it on the on the the page. You can measure things, you can work it out based on your own body measurements. With knitting, however, it's a little bit more tricky to adapt a pattern to your own size until you're a lot more experienced. Um, and even then, it's, it's a little bit more daunting to, to do, in a way, than with the sewing pattern. Um, it's, it's quite early on in your, your garment sewing journey that you're going to learn to adapt a pattern. Knitting, for when you're adapting for fit, it's, it's a little harder. There's so much maths that goes into the stitch patterns. I mean, I think I can leave waist shaping to the knitter. To a point. I mean, I would indicate in the pattern, this is where you want to put your waist shaping in if, uh, if you want to do waist sh shaping. I could even include a, a waist shaping option and a non-waist shaping option. That might be a good idea. But when it comes to things like broad shoulders, busty sleeves, and I'd, 
I'd like to have enough choice there for knitters to be able to adapt the way that you do a sewing pattern. Um, but I don't know if that's achievable at this stage of my sort of designing ability. We'll see. Okay, so that's uh, 10 minutes of me wittering away. Oh my. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll chat in a bit. Have some coffee, do some Xbox. Someone's on uh, parcel guard duty. Okay, so that's the last of the presents wrapped. Um, I'm just going to settle down and get on with some uh, crochet squares. With a bit of uh, Netflix or YouTube or something. Um, that's pretty much all I've got for you today because uh, I've not really got anything else planned. It's for Sunday, so there's that. Um, if I do pick up the camera later, I'll obviously pop it in, but I don't think I will. Um, so yeah, it's a bit crochet, a bit of TV, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>